Hello and welcome. In this case, welcome back. I'm Matthew, and this video is part two in our series on installing the MVS 3.8 operating system from scratch under the Hercules emulator uh, using Jay Mosley's installation instructions. If you have not seen video part one, I recommend you go back and watch it. I'll link it in the description below. Uh, but I'll assume you have done that and you are eager for us to get into it and start the actual work on the mainframe for installing MVS 3.8. So this should be a quick video because this is a relatively quick step. Uh, and this is to transfer the starter system from the tapes. These would be, for example, tapes that IBM shipped you with your new mainframe back in 1980. And uh, we're going to transfer the data from those tapes onto hard drives, or DASD, as they're called in the mainframe world. And that will allow us to then boot up that starter system in the next step uh, off of those hard drives. And we'll use that starter system as the basis uh, where we run the commands to install the MVS 3.8 operating system onto our target disks. So prerequisites. Uh, we should have done all of these in the last video. Uh, there is a big note here about older versions of Hercules that doesn't apply to us. We're using Hercules 3.13, which does not have this problem. We have downloaded the tapes and the installation objects. We have the directory structure, and we have all of our utility scripts and config files. Um, so more information about that. All right, so the first step is we need to create the DASD volumes. These are our emulated hard drive files that we're going to install the starter system onto. And Jay provides us a utility script to do that. So if I switch back over to our terminal window, we can run that starter, uh, the create script, and run it with the starter parameter. And you can see that created two DASD files for us. Uh, so if we look at our DASD directory now, you can see that we have our start one volume and our spool zero volume. These are 3330 disks. And as I mentioned before in the previous video, because we're using compressed DASD, uh, you can see these are only taking about 3K on disk right now uh, because we haven't put any data into them yet. Uh, so they're, they're just empty, uh, empty volumes at this point. Okay, back to the instructions. We've done that, and perfect. Uh, you can see here he has uh, his thoughts on compressed DASD. Uh, in this case, uh, I think he's essentially saying he doesn't like to use them, uh, but if you want to, you can. All right. So the first emulated mainframe system we're going to run is defined by the ibcdmprs.conf file. This is a Hercules configuration file that tells Hercules what hardware do you want to emulate. And uh, one of the nice things that Jay Mosley does here is he provides these diagrams in each step uh, for each of the configuration files just to give us a picture of, okay, what does our mainframe look like? And in this case, we have a relatively simple system uh, that has four card readers it has a 1052 console, which is a, uh, it's a line-oriented kind of printer, typewriter, keyboard um, console. So it's just line at a time. It'll print out lines. You type in a line, hit enter, it submits it, and you get more lines back out of the system. Uh, in the Hercules world, we connect to 1052 consoles just through simple Telnet. We're not using our 3270 emulator. It's just a Telnet session, so we can type and read a line at a time. We have a couple of tape devices. And we have those two DASD files that we just created. And we're going to be using the dump restore program, which is on uh, these tapes. And that program allows us to enter commands that will read the data from the tape and restore it to DASD. So uh, let's, let's look at this config file, IBC. So let's switch back to our terminal. Let's look at conf i, b, c, d, m, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> One of the things you'll notice is that these tape devices, and this is the reason that Jay decided to put four of them in this one system, 
Um, these are all set up to read these job files that uh, he's already created for us. So these are the files that actually have the commands for the dump restore program. And you'll see we're just gonna go through them one at a time. And uh, these are the jobs that will restore the data on the tapes to our starter systems. I think each one essentially will format the volume uh, and then restore the data from the tape to the volume and then do the same thing to the, the spool volume. So if we look at the SA jobs, for example, um, the first one here, right? So you can see we're gonna read this in as punched cards, right? We're emulating a card reader. These files, each line represents a single punched card. And so Hercules lets us feed files into an emulated card reader uh, and it will send those into our system as if we had a stack of cards in the reader that had, uh, you know, these lines punched into them. So uh, sure enough, we're initializing those volumes. Um, what else do we have in the SA jobs? We then, uh, SA jobs in start one. And this is not the one I just looked at. Let's just look at all of them. Um, so we're, you'll see subtle changes in the device addresses. So that's how we know which uh, particular devices we're working with, with which tapes we're reading from. Um, you can see here's a restore command from a tape at this address to a device. This is our 3330 disk at this address, 151. Um, so these are the actual commands to the standalone dump and restore program that we will be running. Um, just if you're curious in terms of, you know, what's actually happening, this is what's happening. We are initializing the volumes and then we're using the restore command to bring data from the tape into the volume that we just formatted. All right, so let's look at our instructions as to how to get going. So we're gonna run the Hercules emulator using that config file. That is how we end up with Hercules giving us a mainframe that looks like this configuration. So Hercules, IBC, DM, et cetera, et cetera. So I will say Hercules dash F, CNF, IB, uh, not CNF, conf, IBC, DMPRS dot conf. And this time, instead of immediately quitting because we had no config file, Hercules is running. Uh, now to keep everything straight, I'm gonna rename this screen Hercules. So we'll be able to see down at the bottom when we're in this Hercules window. And I'm gonna make a new uh, terminal session here. And this one I think is going to be, if we look at our instructions, uh, we, need, we need this 1052 console. And so to get that 1052 console access, we're going to Telnet to our, uh, our local host Hercules instance on port 3270. So let's do that. Telnet local host, doesn't really matter what directory I'm in, but may as well keep it consistent here. Uh, Telnet local host 3270. Okay, so now this screen session is our uh, our 1052 console, okay? And then last but not least, we'll always just keep a, a shell session open in case we wanna look at files or do anything. So we can name that shell. So this will be uh, how I do this in, in the future videos. So hopefully it's not too confusing. You can always see which terminal we're in uh, by looking down here at the bottom and the one that's highlighted with the red parentheses uh, will tell us where we are. For example, I can switch back over to Hercules. Now you can see we're in Hercules. Uh, when I'm doing this on my own system, I have a big monitor and I just keep all of these as separate terminal windows uh, all over the screen so I can see all of them at once. Uh, but again, I figured this way we can keep the font a little bit bigger uh, and just look at one terminal at a time in the video. So it's hopefully a little bit easier to read than if I needed uh, to be juggling multiple terminals around the screen. Okay. So we're connected. We have our 1052 console. And now in the Hercules window, we type IPL280. 
Um, so again, if you're relatively new to Hercules or you've just been using the turnkey system where the Hercules uh, console or emulator itself is kind of behind the scenes, what we do in the Hercules window is essentially what we would do to the physical hardware in the real world. So if we need to mount a tape, if we need to attach a new disk drive, if we need to uh, you know, hit the IPL button and dial in the, the device address that we want to IPL from, those are the kinds of things that you have to do by physically touching the hardware in the real world. And Hercules is our mainframe. Uh, it is the hardware of our mainframe. So when we need to do something like that, those are the kinds of things you'll see where we need to type a command into the Hercules window, as opposed to our MVS operator console, for example, which might be uh, you know, another device, that keyboard printer combo, or later the 3270 display station uh, that's hooked up to the mainframe, but isn't really part of the actual mainframe hardware complex. So with that, we can IPL 280, as the instructions tell us to do here in Hercules. So IPL 280, hit enter. And we have now uh, booted, that's the mainframe terminology is initial program load. We've booted off of the device at address 280, which if we look back and remember from the instructions, uh, 280 is one of these tape uh, devices here that the config file had preloaded uh, one of the tapes into. So that's generally the pattern of what's going on here. Um, we can see the device addresses will correspond back up with something in the diagram. Uh, so I'm not going to uh, to give that level of detail each time we go through this. I just wanted to point it out this first time because again, if this is the first time you're kind of running through this, uh, part of the the benefit and the fun of doing this is that you really do start to learn what's actually going on. And uh, I'd encourage you to keep thinking about, well, okay, what is happening when I type this command? Why are we running this command? What tape am I loading off of? Uh, those kinds of things are just part of the learning experience that this can provide. Okay, in the Telnet window, press the Enter key. We can do that. So I'm gonna switch back over to that Telnet window, which is our 1052 console. I'll hit Enter. And now the mainframe is running our standalone DASD uh, dump restore program. And it's asking us, uh, essentially, this is you know, Hercules saying, hey, I'm waiting for input now. Uh, what do you want me to tell the program? So what we're going to tell it is to read its input. Uh, in this case, this syntax means read the input from the 1442 device, which is a punch reader at address 00C. So I'm just gonna copy that and we will enter that into our console here. Okay, so uh, we saw the data it read. This was that data in that uh, card stack that we just loaded into that card reader. Uh, it says end of job, uh, intervention required. We can ignore that line and now it's ready again. Okay. Job doesn't take long to execute. Nope, it doesn't. Uh, you can see that we expect to see some of that. We can tell that it's done because Hercules will have 1111 at the end of the program status word and will be in a wait state. Uh, so once we do that, we'll stop. This tells Hercules to stop the emulated CPU. And then we'll IPL from 280 again. So we'll boot from that tape again, uh, but we've now fast forwarded to the uh, wherever the tape left off from last time. Um, if we were to quit Hercules right now, this tape would essentially be rewound. So we don't wanna do that. We just wanna stop. And then we wanna boot from where we are on the tape because it will now have uh, uh, the next program that we need to run essentially. Okay, so we're gonna stop and IPL 280. So back in Hercules, we stop, and then we IPL 280. And now I'm gonna switch back over to our 1052 console, switch back to the instructions. We're booted back up. And in this case, we're now going to read from a different set of cards, the ones we had loaded into device address 00. D. So let's run that at our terminal, our console. Uh, 
All right, so you saw it read in those cards. It thought for a second, and now we have end of job. All right, so now we're going to stop, and we are going to IPL from 281, the other tape device. So stop and IPL 281. We can do that over in Hercules. Stop and IPL 281. Okay. Uh, whoops, that's the wrong key. We want to go back to our 1052 console. And the input we need to provide is now from the third card reader. Okay. So again, this initializes the volume. We get that intervention required. That's fine. And last but not least, we're going to stop an IPL from 281 again. And then we're going to run this command to read the commands from the fourth card reader. So stop IPL 281, and then we'll provide the input on the operator's console. So back to Hercules, stop. IPL 281, back to the 1052 console, input 1442.00f. Okay, so that restored the spool volume from the tape to our DASD device. So end of job. So with that done, now we can quit Hercules. We're done with this hardware configuration, and we've restored the data from those two tapes to the two DASD that we created and initialized. And with that, we are done with the first step of J. Mosley's instructions for installing MVS. We have uh, restored the starter system from the tapes to the DASD. Uh, so that in the next step, we'll be able to boot from that starter system uh, on the hard drives instead of the tapes, and we'll pick it up from there. So let's go ahead and complete that last step where we uh, go back over to Hercules and we simply quit. And now our emulated mainframe is powered off, ready for us to take the next steps. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for part three, where we will uh, load the distribution libraries from tape. Thanks for watching and see you next time.